fire station in South London. Let's see what's going on in there. The woman and two men are firefighters in the London Fire Brigade arriving for duty. They check the roll call board to see what fire engine they are riding. Firefighters clean their fire uniform before coming on duty at 9 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock at night. Chemical resistant rubber fire boots have to be polished. Yellow leggings protect the firefighters' legs from getting wet. They sharp well at night, at fires or on busy roads. The firefighter puts on a scarf called a neckerchief before putting on his tunic. The neckerchief stops sparks dropping down his neck. The fire tunic is made of wool. It's tough and very heavy. The helmet is made of plastic or cork and is painted with a flame-resistant yellow paint. It protects the firefighter's head from falling debris at fires and other incidents and its bright colour means it can be seen easily in smoke or at night. The, the fire belt is made of black webbing and holds an axe and a yellow torch. Two minutes to nine. The duty man in the station watchroom rings six bells which tell the firefighters to report for roll call. This is held in the appliance room. The appliance room is where the fire engines stand inside a fire station. The second in command at this station is a sub-officer. He collects the roll call board from the watchroom and after roll call these will be placed on the fire engine to which they relate. The firefighters line up for roll call. The officer in the white shirt is the station officer. He is in command of the station. The sub-officer calls the parade to attention and calls the roll. The officer with the yellow helmet with one black band is a leading fireman. The sub-officer tells the station officer that the blue watch are all present and correct. There are four watches or shifts on a fire station. The others are red, white and green. The firefighters are told which fire engine they are riding and then go and put their fire uniforms on the engines. After the roll call, the duty man in the watchroom tests the fire call bells and lights. He checks the dispatch lights are working. These are different coloured lights to indicate which fire engine or items of special equipment is needed. In a logbook, he writes the names of the firefighters who are on duty, which fire engines they are riding, and that all safety checks have been carried out and are satisfactory. messages are received on a teleprinter. If it is a routine message only, the green light comes on. If it is a fire call, the green and red lights both come on, as do the call bells and the lights throughout the station. A map reference is included in the fire message, and when a call is received, the duty man selects a small map with that reference. This shows the area where the fire or emergency is. A firefighter must check that his breathing apparatus set is working correctly. The breathing apparatus set works from a compressed air cylinder which allows him to work in smoke or dangerous chemical fumes. He turns on the air supply and checks it is flowing correctly. The set will last between 30 to 45 minutes depending how hard the firefighter is working. Torch, OK. Also the distress signal. 
Should he get into difficulty at a fire, the sounding of this distress signal will bring others to his aid. Yellow Tally has a firefighter's name on it and is used to check who is in a fire and how long they've been in there. Drivers help each other to check that the lights, blue flashing lights and two-tone horns are all working properly. The walkie-talkie sets are also tested. So too is the fire engine's main radio. The London Fire Brigade has many types of fire engine. This is a pump ladder. The wide variety of equipment carried on each fire engine is kept in these lockers. In this locker, and one like it on the other side of the fire engine, are stowed hose and hose reel equipment. Ladders are carried on the roof. At the rear are the pump controls which feed water through hoses. This fire engine carries 1,360 litres of water, but the pump can handle up to 4,500 litres of water per minute when connected to a water main. All fire engines in London are painted red. An emergency tender. It carries special tools, cutting equipment, jacks, lifting gear and a type of breathing apparatus set used with full protection suits. A turntable ladder can extend to a maximum of 30 metres. firefighter climbs to the top of the ladder wearing a heavy hook belt. He hooks himself to a ring at the top of the ladder as a safety precaution. The operator extends the ladder and rotates it. The ladder can go around in a complete circle. There is an intercom linking the man at the top of the ladder and the operator below. This ladder can be used as a staircase to rescue people from high buildings or people can be lowered by a rescue rope and also as a tower to pour tons of water on a large fire. The hydraulic platform can reach up to 21 metres from ground level. It can direct a jet of water on a fire and protect anyone in the cage with a water spray. The cage holds up to eight people. A hose laying lorry is used to relay water to fires where the local supply is insufficient for the firefighter's needs. Two lengths of large diameter hose can be laid at speed for a distance of up to almost one kilometre. Divisional control units attend all major fires and emergencies. The red and white flashing light is telescopic and when extended can be seen clearly at a congested incident. Firefighters respond to the fire call bells immediately and may slide down the pole to save time. Boots and leggings are put on first, 
they finished dressing on their way to the incident. Firefighters here are using hose reel equipment which is supplied with water from the fire engine's tanks. The station officer, he's the one with a white helmet and single black band, notes details of the incident for a report he has to write when he returns to the fire station. The fire out, the firefighters are now returning to the fire station where they will top up the fire engine's tanks. The station officer calls the fire engine into the fire station yard for drill. Every day and night, firefighters practice putting out fires and dealing with other emergencies. Today, they are to use the 13.5 metre metal ladder When firefighters go into a burning building, they always wear breathing apparatus sets to protect their lungs from heat and smoke. They hand in their yellow name tallies before climbing the ladder. A jet of water is working at ground level to protect the firefighters from imaginary flames and heat whilst they are working on the ladder. The first firefighter carries a rope in a canvas bag on his back. At the top he holds the rope at one end and throws the bag and its contents to the ground. The hose and nozzle, which is called a branch, are tied by rope and hauled up the building. The station officer ends the drill by shouting, knock off and make up, or by using a signal. The order is repeated. The water is turned off at the fire engine and the hydrant is shut down. Firefighters usually get water to put out fires from fire hydrants. The water from the hydrant is under pressure and soaks the firefighter when the hose is disconnected. All the equipment is returned to the fire engine. Great care is needed when handling the ladder, which is very heavy. The plastic hose is rolled up and put back on the fire engine. It does not have to be dried. A practice car crash. The firewoman is pretending to be trapped and injured. A compressed air power saw cuts through the roof pillars of a car very quickly. The crew wear protective gloves, visors to guard their eyes and brightly coloured reflective jackets. A colleague gives her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation through a tube. This requires special training, so please, don't you try it. The casualty has been checked for injuries and is protected by a heavy, flame-proof sheet whilst the crew cut her free.
A zip gun, powered by compressed air, makes short work of the car roof. The sub-officer, who wears a yellow helmet with two black bands, pushes the roof out of the way. An hydraulic jaw is used to cut the steering wheel. This jaw is powered by oil pumped to a high pressure. With the lower part of the steering wheel removed, the injured person is lifted out of the car. At a real incident, she would be taken to hospital by ambulance. Sometimes, saws cannot cut the metal and the firefighters use gas cutting equipment. It is not normally used near petrol as it gives off flames and sparks. But here we are cutting under carefully controlled conditions. The crew have to wear heavy gloves and goggles when using this equipment. Lectures are given by officers to firefighters every week on various subjects relating to fires and other emergencies. At one o'clock, the firefighters have their lunch, if they are not on a fire call. All fire hydrants are inspected twice a year to make sure they are working properly. The yellow and black hydrant plate is clean so that it is clearly visible. A standpipe is used to get water into the hose. The hydrant is opened and the water channelled into the gutter by a short length of hose. This is to prevent anybody slipping on the wet pavement. The station officer has checked that everything is working satisfactorily and he marks this on his hydrant inspection sheet. The crew moves on to the next hydrant. The fire engine crew remains in radio contact with the fire control room and are always ready to answer an emergency call. Four fire engines were needed to control this fire, but this building was fitted with an automatic water protection system called a sprinkler, which operated during the early stages of the fire. The fire damage would have been far greater if the factory had not been equipped with sprinklers. 
Fire Brigade officers give talks and evacuation drills to children's homes, hospitals and old persons' homes, as well as testing firefighting equipment in certain buildings once a year. Do you know how to call the fire brigade on a push-button telephone? If not, listen to what Paul has to say. Across the street, drawing home. 